friends, I'm Valeria at Chase and Paper. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share another quick and easy project with you. We are going to make a beautiful miniature Christmas flip-flop journal. Now this project is very much based on my original no envelope flip-flop journal, which I shared earlier this year. I wanted to make a Christmas edition with different materials. And this is just going to prove once again that flip-flop journals don't have to be complicated. You don't have to spend a lot of time making one. It's really easy and it's really fun. And this little journal is perfect for all your December daily activities. It's great to record all the wonderful Christmas memories. And it's a perfect size to fit into your handbag. So if you're going to travel, you can easily take it with you and it won't take much space. Now, this junk journal is going to be available for sale at my Etsy shop, Hidden Stairway Finds. But I definitely want to show you how easy and fun it is to make your own. So before we begin, could you please give my video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and share this video with your crafty friends because I'm sure they are going to love this idea as well. Are you ready to see how to make this quick and easy junk journal? Great, let's begin! We are going to begin with this Christmas 2023 bag traps by Tim Holtz. And I just thought this was so pretty and they are double-sided sheets. Each one measures 6 inches by 10 inches, so I thought it would be a perfect size and a perfect thickness. So let's go ahead and pick three backdrops from the set. And these are the three backdrops that I chose, I'm going to work with. So again, they are double-sided. If you don't have the backdrop set, that's fine. You can use any double-sided scrapbooking paper. Uh, just make sure that it's kind of on a thicker side and it actually doesn't even have to be double-sided um, It's just I feel double-sided paper is easier to work with and you have less steps because you do not have to decorate the white side Afterwards, so there we go. Let's arrange our three papers In one continuous strip and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue it all together. And right, I'm going to use my glue mat to protect the table. And I'm going to use my Scotch Create glue stick. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right here. And now add in my paper. And the next paper, doing the same thing, covering about half an inch of the paper with glue and attaching it all together so that it overlaps like this. There. And so now that my glue is completely dry, I'm going to start folding it into a flip-flop junk journal. So I'm going to grab this right side of my paper and I'm going to flip it over so it's easier to start folding and I'm going to fold it at about three and a half inches. I'm not taking any formal measurements. I'm just doing it by eye. You can definitely measure out your first fold and I fold making a nice sharp crease with my bone folder. Great, and now I'm folding it back, making sure that my fold matches up with my edge right here. And I fold again. So if you follow my measurements roughly, your fold lines will not fall onto your paper seams, which is what I'm trying to do. And folding that again to the back. Again, make sure that all your edges and creases match up on the side. 
and fold one more time. And that is all. We should have a total of five folds. And I'm going to mark just right here so I know where to cut because we don't need any of this. There. Now let's take a look at our booklet to make sure that we folded it right. So it should have a front cover. And if you flip it over, it should have like a back cover. And if you open it like an accordion, you should have two peaks right here, right? So this is what it should look like. So if your booklet looks the same way, then you folded it right. And we can move on to the next step, which is I'm going to close this first fold into the pocket. I'm going to use my art glitter glue and put a little line of glue from the crease all the way to the edge. And I'll do it on both sides. And I'll close my pocket. Next, I'm going to add an additional piece to the front cover. And this also came from the set of our backdrops. I just cut it a little bit shorter. So I'm just placing it and I'm going to give myself a half an inch room to make a hinge right here. I'm going to make a little fold to create that hinge. making sure everything still looks good. And I'm going to glue it onto that first flip. Just going to cut tiny little corners off first to make it look and fit better. So I'm going to add a little glue to my hinge and I'm going to hook it on to the front cover. And I'm not gluing it on directly in the center. I'm kind of pushing it down, closer to the bottom a little bit. Checking on my hinge. Looking good. And so this is what we have so far. We have just one little flip on the front. Then we have our pocket that we just created. And then it opens up and opens up again. And... We are flipping it over. There is another opening and another opening. And so now we can go ahead and add signatures. The most simple way to think about where we need to add our signatures is whenever you see a band or a crease, that's where a signature goes. Okay, so let's count that. One signature, two, three, flipping it over, four, five okay so we need total of five signatures so now let's go ahead and get our paper here i have my big pile of christmas papers and things and if you're wondering what's in here there is pattern paper and all sorts of christmas sheet music just all sorts of fun christmas related things they don't all have to be christmas related I was just looking at the colors, so if it's red and green, um, I decided it's going to make a nice addition, a couple of small doilies, and this fabric doily as well. It looks really Christmassy with a lot of red and green, and it's going to add some nice texture, and I have lots of coffee dyed paper here, some fun stamp paper. You get the idea. Let's go ahead and put it into signatures and cut them down to size. And so this process is going to look a little bit like this. I'm basically going to take a sheet of paper and fold it down to size to fit inside my journal. 
and then I'm just going to tear it to size and you can cut or tear whatever you prefer I prefer tearing for this one because it's faster and it kind of goes with the vintage look of my journal and I'm going to tear it on the bottom to make it shorter and I'm checking to see that it fits nicely and it does and so now I'm sort of going to use this sheet of paper as a guide to make the rest of the papers for my signatures. So now all my signatures are ready. I have five signatures. One of them is a tiny, small little signature because it's going to go on the very front. So this one is kind of a smaller in size and only has four folded pages. The rest of the signatures have five to six folded pages each so let's start with our first signature that's going to go on our cover because it's going to be mostly visible i arranged the pages in a way that i think is going to look the nicest and going to complement the look of my front cover let's stitch our signature in i'm going to need an awl and wax clean and thread and a needle now I'm going to go ahead and pierce the holes through the pages and through the band on the cover at the same time. So I'm opening my signature in the center. Looking for about the center of that spine and I pierce the hole. And now I'll go up and pierce another hole on top. And now I'll go down and pierce another hole on the bottom and we are ready to stitch them in. This is going to be a three hole pamphlet stitch. I'm going to my central hole right here. Leave a nice long tail. Now go to your second hole from the outside and pull it out on the inside. Now let's go to our third hole right here on the bottom and we come out right here on the spine. And now let's go back to that central hole in the middle and we come out in the center inside. Pull it tight but do not tear your pages and now two knots that was right over left now i'm gonna do left over right and that's it and now i'm going to go ahead and stitch the rest of the signatures in and all my signatures are now stitched in this is what we have and this is what it looks like and look how nice and chunky this little journal is uh, there is plenty of room for everything now let's go ahead and spruce up the front cover a bit i'm going to decorate it with a small simple collage this is a beautiful picture i found on the graphics fairy website and this is going to be a focal point for my front cover and i'm going to layer it with a few other pieces i'm going to use this red border vintage style label I'm going to fold it over on the other side. And I'm going to glue this picture on top. And now I'm going to open it up and go onto this first page and add this little um, holly with berries. This way, it's going to be picking out and visible on the front cover and it's going to add a nice little touch so what i did next i added this little sentiment here on the cover parse post and i let it extend just a little bit to the side of my cover and i added another sentiment on the inside it says special delivery and I went ahead and 
I decorated the bed just a little bit. I just added the picture of Santa and a small little sentiment just to keep it nice and simple. And it already looks pretty cute, don't you think? But I want to add another layer to the front cover. And I'm going to go with this holly and berries. And because we have some holly and berries peeking out on the other side, it's going to really create a dimensional um, effect. I think it looks really pretty. Now, of course, I'm going to go ahead and add tons of pockets and washi tapes and um, belly bands and all sorts of decorations to my junk journal, but I'm not going to do it on camera. I won't take your time. You know, let's just add one pocket so you know what I mean. I have this Christmas play card, which I'm going to turn into a pocket and put it right here. So this is going to be an L-shaped pocket. So I'm just putting some glue on the bottom and on one side. And down it goes. And now that my glue is dry, I'm going to add a piece of ephemera into the pocket. How about another one? All right, let's add another pocket right here. I'm going to use this die cut I have. And I'm putting some glue on the sides. And down it goes. And let's tuck in something fun. And now let's go ahead and make a closure. And for the closure, I decided to go pretty simple. I am going to use a piece from this Team Holds Baseboards Christmas Collection of 2023. And I decided to go with this piece on Earth sentiment. I used my crocodile to punch two holes, two small holes on each side. And I'm going to use this twine. I think it's really adding to my rustic and vintage look of the journal. And I'm going to wrap it around once, twice. And now I am going to thread the twine through my sentiment. Moving it to the center. Wrapping it around one more time and tying over here on the side. And I'm going to use this garment pin and I'm going to tie a piece of baker's twine onto the pin. And now I'm going to add a couple of pieces of Christmas ribbon. I'm going to just pierce them with the pin. And I'm going to add this little fun die cut to my cluster right here. And I'm going to add this little bell from Santa Slay. And there's my little cluster. And I am just going to pin it right on onto our twine. And there we are, friends. Our journal is now complete. Here is just another proof for you that a beautiful junk journal doesn't have to be complicated. It could be as simple as making an accordion fold and adding decorations to your heart's content. If you like this little project, please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. And do let me know in the comments if you think you are going to make this little Christmas flip-flop journal. Thank you for spending time with me today and I'll see you next time.